Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Kadir Topal. Forgive me if I mispronounced any of that, but thank you for your continued support. And I'm branching out from yesterday morning's video here a little bit because demonic possession, all right, demonic possession is what keeps these narcs, okay, the narcissistic abusers, that's what keeps them in sync, okay? That's why, okay, it's so robotic, okay? So for anybody wondering about the why, that's why. Right? They're, they're, because it's all part of them following the crowd, right? Okay, so they're following the crowd, and so they don't stand out, okay? They're in sync, because the narcissistic abusers, they are afraid to stand out, okay? They're afraid to look different. Now, I'm not talking about appearance-wise. I'm talking about behavioral-wise. Okay, they don't want to be seen as different. <clears throat> That's their, one of their many fears, is they don't want to be seen as different. Because they think that being seen, if they were, the, the irony is that they are. Okay, so we, once we are in God's reality, and because God awakened us to and from the abuse, they're the one dishing out, because they think it's normal. Uh-huh, they do. They think it's love. They think that abuse is normal. Mm-hmm. So they're dishing it out, and they end up standing out anyway because of that. All right, that's the irony behind it. They don't realize that. But they want to, you know, they, it's that conforming to the world that they do, all right? That, the puppets on a string, in sync, okay? The puppets on a string. So they, they don't want to look, you know, they, they don't want to appear, okay, so to speak, behavioral-wise. They don't want to be separated from the crowd. So that way, all of that abuse keeps getting dished out back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so they don't want to deviate from that because, well, again, it's all they know. It's like I put out a thing on Instagram a while back that, uh, yeah, they gonna, they're going to keep repeating the same thing. Anything that always gets them attention, that's what they're going to keep repeating. Okay, this is why the patterns run dry, all right? <laughs> from, yeah, that concept from another video, okay? that we did on the morning of the 28th of this month of January. So, there you go, all right? Their the, the patterns run dry. And so they don't want to, because that's, it, it's just what they know, okay? It's all they've ever known. They don't want to learn anything. They get to that point where they don't want to learn anything new because, see, in order to learn new things, we have to unlearn old things, right? We have to unlearn old ways, like when God says, you know, we are created a new creature, a new spiritual creature in Christ. We're created anew, okay? And so, and, and we're putting away an old thing. The flesh dies, okay? Not literally, you all. This is spiritual, okay? <laughs> Never forget that. Everything is spiritual here. And that that's what it, that's what it means, that we no longer, you know, we do that inner work, things like that. See, the narcissistic abusers don't want to do that. Because some of us have heard them say that it's too painful or it's depressing when we, I've, I've asked them, uh, you know, a couple case studies. I'm like, do you not ever self-reflect? And one did admit and said, no, it's too depressing. So I was like, oh, wow. Okay, that tells us a lot right there. Because that's another way they tell on themselves when we ask them a specific question like that and why they don't want to self-reflect. Is it too, too painful or, or too depressing to self-reflect? Yeah, because that lets us know. They also know that the abuse, especially when they're aging or older, much older, and do know better, but they don't, they, they don't want to stop doing it because it's always worked in the past. Remember, they live in the past. And so because Jesus tells us that no man... Who put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And that's another reason why the narcissistic abusers want to try to trick us into living in the past with them. No, we can't do that, chosen one. Uh-uh, no, we're not meant to do that. We do the self-reflecting to connect dots and things like that and to figure out within ourselves, what do we need to talk to God about? <laughs> you know, what God needs to show us about us that we need to put away 
And a lot of that is in scripture too. Oh yeah, God tells us exactly what we're to be doing and not to be doing. And then always remember this, you all. When we ask God's forgiveness for sin, make sure we include those ignorant and unknown sins. And then, yes, I've said this in other videos before, but I wanted to remind whoever needs this because we've got to do that as well. Because if we still don't know everything, you know, no, there's no, no way we can know everything. So if we, you know, engage in an unknown sin or an ignorant sin because we didn't know yet, but then I turn around and ask God, okay, for any of the unknown or ignorant ones, can you please reveal them to me so I don't make that mistake again? <laughs> you know, and he does. Oh, yeah, because it's all part of that repentance as well, right? Renewing the mind and things like that. So we ask God, all right, so did what unknown or ignorant one did we do? Because <laughs> can you reveal it to us? And he does. And so that way we can go, ah, okay, we're not going to do that again. Okay, so there you go. But uh, the known, the, the known sin that are in the Bible, oh, yeah, we start with those. Absolutely, start with those. And as I say over there on Patreon, y'all, there are some things the world has tried to convince people are sin that are not sin. So this is why we got to have that discernment. Okay, big time. We've got to have that discernment. But we realize that that demonic possession does keep all the narcissists. That's what keeps these narcissistic abusers robotic. Okay, that's what keeps them in sync. Okay, and with the narcissistic, low-vibing, demonic matrix. Okay, that, yep, all of that. That's what keeps them in sync. And keep them blended, okay? Keep them blending in so that their behaviors don't stand out amongst each other. Because after all, well, they stand out to us now pretty daggone quick. You know, for the further along we get in the healing and spiritual growth, as we get that heightened awareness in God's reality, uh, all of their behaviors stand out to us. We're like, oh, okay, yeah, we can see what you're doing. But... The ones that are just like them, because they think it's normal, they keep doing it and they keep engaging in it because that's that's what that's what they know and, and all they know. Okay, they don't want to learn anything new. Okay, just like I said that because in order to do that, we have to unlearn old ways. We have to unlearn. Uh, we have to put away childish things. We have to put away a lot of that to grow and to mature. And they don't want to do that because that what the way they behave, toddler behaviors and all that abuse and stuff like that, that's what gets them attention and that is what get, get, gives them, uh, I guess you could say, the a permission, I suppose, or justification for hanging on to the victim mentality. Okay, that, that toddler mindset, that victim mentality. And so they'll, oh, watch out for this, yeah. Anytime they try to dish out a guilt trip, trying to make us feel guilty for, let's say we change, we're allowed to change our mind, by the way. Yes, we are, because we, God's chosen one, when we went once, he awakens us and starts renewing that mind. We get control of our own mind back. We got our self-thinking thing going. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we don't let them guilt trip us for changing our mind about something that we may have. Let's say uh, we had told the narcissistic abuser that, oh, sure, we would be, uh, let's say, best friend for life, but then their true colors show, and we're like, wow, no, we're allowed to change our mind because God even tells us that once, that, once that's revealed, and if they are not making any effort to change, to grow, evolve, and, there's, and they continue to do that, that dishing out that abuse, so we cut them off. And then they want to try to maybe come back around later and guilt trip us. Then, well, I thought you said you, you know, we would be besties forever or whatever. No, okay? Just don't let them do that to you because they want to try and trigger you with that. All right? Don't let them do that. And, and even, even if it's family, you all, many of us, have dealt with that, uh, you know, a particular family member who always wanted to try to make us feel guilty or make us feel obligated to do something that we weren't comfortable doing or that we were unable to do because of insert here, right? But then they would want to try and guilt trip us because we're unable to do that for whatever reason. And we, or we, don't, or we don't want to, okay? That's the thing. So they want to try to guilt, you know, guilt trip us into, huh, we don't let them do that anymore, boundary. And then saying no becomes easier. Yes, congratulations. There's a lot of y'all who are finally, you're finding that voice and learning how to tell the manip these manipulators no. 
and that we're not going to tolerate that, we're not going to put up. And, you know, even if you don't have to say the word no, the mommy or daddy look works just fine, okay? They have to knock it off. It's all part of we, how we learn to resist the devil and he shall flee. And we don't let them do, no, we don't let them anymore uh, do that to us. We don't let them trick us into, you know, doing something that we don't want to do or it doesn't feel right on our spirit or it's just, it's uncomfortable, like, wait a minute, no, nah, because, for example, if we've identified, you know, additional narc, you know, that, you know, uh, uh, well, be family, acquaintances, neighbors, so-called friends of the narc, frenemies, so to speak, if you will, of the narc, flying monkeys, what have you, and let's say they're all wanting to have a get-together and they want you to come along and you're like, no, thank you, because you've already identified it, don't let them guilt trip you over that. No, 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 because, you, you know, that's how we have our, you know, we take our power back, okay, we tell them no, we, no, you know, we've got plan, you know, we got, we, we don't want to, we don't have to tell them we don't want to, we just, no, and they don't need an explanation, even if they ask why, no, I'm not coming, you know, I mean, send the invitation back, because we learn what God tells us about that, that we're, we don't envy with them, we're not going to associate with them, because we know, we know now that, if we, ha if God hadn't awakened us when He did, the very real possibility that we would have, be could have become just like them, and God wasn't gonna have none of that. Okay, so that's another reason why He tells us be careful who we associate with. I'm paraphrasing here, but you know what I'm talking about, because we don't want to, you know, lest you become like them. We don't, you know, see that's how that's how these narcs do it through that spiritual energy. Okay, turning, you know, other others who can be turned into a narc into a narc, and so that's really. Really, what they're after right there is to try, because again, that blendedness, okay? That demonic possession to keep everybody in sync at that same low vibration. Remember you all, as God continues to level you up, yeah, it's going to irritate them. Because they, they were okay with you as long as you were down there in that low vibration with them. Uh-huh, yeah, they were okay with you then. But as soon as God wakes you up, you get in his reality and you start getting on that high vibe. Mm-hmm, start, your, your frequency is being raised. You get in a high vibration. Uh-huh, with all the love, the peace, the joy, the happy, all the holy things that God has inside us. As you start vibing higher. And then now all of a sudden, they, they're not going to be okay with you anymore because you got out. That's right, the enemy can't stand it when, you know, God, when God steps in and chooses us out anyway, there you go. No matter what it is, the enemy tried to suck us into, and God intervened and chose it and got us out of it. Like he delivers us out from all of that. And so that makes the enemy even matter because he cannot take control away from God, no matter how hard he tries. Right? Never forget that. Right? God is always in control. He, the enemy is not going to get control. That's why another reason why the enemy hates Jesus. And that's why the narcs hate Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life to the Heavenly Father, okay? Once we do that, and we get our power back, God is in full control anyway, and the enemy knows it. It's checkmate for him, and he doesn't like it when we come out here with God's spiritual truth either. But that's too bad, because again, God is in control. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. Go check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Till next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.